Brost at nine. Now, though, tonight asks what happens when you eat food that's passed its sell-by date. Brace your stomachs for the ultimate taste test. Tonight, smell it. Oh, God, no, no. Past its sell-by date. Uh, trust me, I've cooked enough chicken in my time to know that is, that is dangerous. I am going to eat it. All right. Use by dates are obviously a legal requirement for the uh, supermarkets to put on the packets and they're done for a serious reason, that's to stop people getting ill. A unique experiment bread. to cut down waste. Uh, it was brown bread, it's now green. That is mould and it smells a bit like cheese. Um, and I'm going to eat it. Or is it a game of culinary Russian roulette? You can quite safely eat food that's gone past its use-by date, but it has to be down to personal preference. If the food is overtly off in terms of its odour, its appearance, its colour, then you probably wouldn't eat it. It looks like E. coli, looks like under a microscope. It, it looks like bacteria. Um, and the, the, the blood has gone a really weird colour. How often do you buy food which ends up past its use-by date? And do you ever wonder if it's safe to eat, if it's a few days old, or even a few weeks? I do, all the time. And it's causing an awful lot of strife here at home because I think that out-of-date food is perfectly fine to eat. But my wife, on the other hand, treats it like an unexploded bomb. Hence this rather exciting experiment. I am going to eat food that's increasingly out of date every day for two weeks. And if I get ill, fair enough. I just want to prove a point, which is that I think we're perhaps a little too obsessed by these things. Use by dates. So for the next two weeks, I'm going to keep a video diary to see whether I make myself sick. OK, day one of the experiment and I'm having eggs on toast. The eggs are one day past their best before date. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to die of food poisoning or anything like that, but um, one assumes the label is there for a reason. A lot of us simply chuck away food that's out of date. Most of it ends up in landfill sites. If waste offends you, look away now. Each year we throw 6.7 million tonnes of food in the bin, enough to fill Wembley Stadium eight times over and worth £10 billion. Now this is where it gets interesting because normally when confronted with some fish that's two days past its use-by date, my wife would either throw it away, put it in the bin, or put it in the dog. Uh, but I am putting it in my stomach. And it tastes great. This is a top crust steak pie, which is three days past its use by date. And uh, it's pretty good. It's three days past its use by date for a reason. And if it's meat, I, I just wouldn't trust it with meat or dairy products. If it was anything else, if it was vegetables or fruit, then it would be fine. Somebody's doing very well out of this experiment. And his name is Monty. Steak pie, three days past its use by day. <laughs> it doesn't like it. So what is the difference between best before and use by? Well, the Food Standards Agency say best before is more about quality than safety. If you eat something after that date, it simply won't taste as good. But they say you should not eat food past its use by date as there could be a risk to your health. Although I'm ignoring this, they say other people who do an experiment like mine could get really ill, and their advice is based on extensive scientific studies. I'm doing this experiment, right, where I am eating food that is past its use-by date or sell-by date mm -hmm. every day for two weeks. What do you think of that? I'll be sick. Yeah? You, you, think be sick. I, you think I'll be sick? Yeah. I think you'll probably survive. Yeah? Yeah, Would you I think, think you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. And we're a nation of 
over anxious eaters. Yeah, nanny status. Yes, completely. Day four, and I'm having sausages. I'm just going to get my wife to okay. open the packet, and I'm going to smell them because... Do you know something? They smell... Let me smell. These sausages... Oh! No, they, that's what sausages... No, they don't smell normal. That is what no, sausages... No, that's it's... what sausages smell like. They don't smell normal. Well, well, you know, sausages smell like that as far as I'm concerned, and I'm going to eat them. In fact, I only feel queasy a few hours later when I hear that we bin a third of the food we buy. The most commonly chucked foods are fruit and veg. And here are some more figures to turn your stomach. Every day, not every year, but every day, we chuck away 2.8 million tomatoes, 4.4 million apples and 5.1 million potatoes. Of the food we throw away, the single biggest source is fruit and veg at 40%. And one of the reasons behind that is that we seem to be very good at buying fresh fruit and veg. The problem is we're not storing it often correctly or we're letting it go off and then throwing it away. So we're not making best use of that great food that we're buying fresh. And every day we also throw away 7 million slices of bread, 1.2 million sausages and 1 million slices of ham. That's not every week or month, it's every day. Meanwhile, in my own attempt to cut waste, the food-based Russian roulette continues. It's leftover sausages cooked when they were four days out of date and trifled five days past its use-by date, which is so good, my stepson's having some. My wife is treating this six-day-old chicken like it's a loaded gun. She doesn't even want me to, to, to use one of her saucepans because she thinks it's so dangerous. Pick, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Oh, God, I can smell it without going Come. near it. No, no, no. I... Come on, just oh, smell it. No, I can smell just it. smell it. Just smell it. Smell it! Oh, God, no, no, it's really, really bad. It's, I would not touch that. Uh, trust me, I've cooked enough chicken in my time to know that is, that is dangerous. It is not, well, I'm going to eat it. I am going to eat it. It tastes, um, tastes very nice. I've flavoured it with curry powder, a bit of honey. So it tastes good, but obviously the, um, the key thing is what will my stomach be doing in 24 hours? Nutritionists stress that you should think very carefully before trying this at home. I think it's very important to follow use by dates because uh, they are there for a reason. They're not just created um, for, you know, to, to be a problem for people. They are there for a reason. The fact that in some cases you can go beyond the use by date and the product can be safe is a bit of a lottery. So personally, I wouldn't take that chance. No ill effects yet, but just in case I get any, all my food's been tested at a lab. Ironically, back home, my wife has just eaten fresh fish and is suffering stomach cramps. Now, food poisoning affects three quarters of a million people every year and kills about 400. But it's often not easy to find out why someone's got it. Out-of-date food could be one reason, but so could poor hygiene, cross-contamination and not cooking something properly. You can quite safely eat food that's gone past its use-by date, but I think it, is, it has to be down to personal preference. If the food is overtly off in terms of its odour, its appearance, its colour, it's got slime on it, then you probably wouldn't eat it, you'd probably throw it in the bin. But if it still looks and smells fine, then there is no risk with it, as long as it is cooked correctly and you avoid any cross-contamination of raw material, of raw foods when, when, when you're preparing it. Not that that's worrying me. I've made sure all my out-of-date food is being kept at the right temperature and, when necessary, I've cooked it thoroughly. Today, mince, as in mince meat, a week past its um, use-by date, and it looks, I don't know if you can see that, I mean, it, it looks like E. coli looks like under a microscope. It, it looks like bacteria. Um, and the, the, the blood has gone a really weird colour. It tastes really nice and adequately fresh. Slightly tough, but I quite like meat that's, you know, substantial. Perhaps surprisingly, laboratory tests showed that even the mince was safe to eat by the time I'd blitzed it in the pan. With the mince that Johnny ate, um, visually it looked particularly appalling, really. Um, there was a lot of liquid that had come out of the, the mince, and that was essentially looked like very watery brown gravy. 
and when the pack was opened there was a definite off smell to it. But once it was cooked, obviously we got rid of all those bacteria because they're not heat resistant, they're quickly killed off by cooking. But I would suspect Johnny still found that after cooking there was significant smell there. Um, so that would be up for Johnny to decide whether that was tasty or not. Even though it looks okay, I'm less enthusiastic about this Chinese ready meal. Eight days past its use-by date. This doesn't taste too good. But that, I'm not sure if it doesn't taste too good because I just don't like the taste or because it's gone off. I suspect it's the former. I hope it is anyway. <laughs> or else I could end up in intensive care. I'm not the only one doing this. Meet Alf Montague. He's a freegan. He lives on food that's been chucked out, mainly by supermarkets. There's perfectly edible, usable food yeah. that gets thrown away on a daily basis. Uh, and most or some of it is, is because it's past its use-by date, they've bunged it out. A lot of food and other resources is actually within its use-by or best before date. There's a variety of different reasons why it gets thrown out. Say you've got 24 eggs, one egg might get broken, they chuck the lot. 24 beers, one beer gets broken, they chuck the lot. Yeah. Alf, the raider of the lost bins, yeah. led me to the back of a supermarket. Right. So have a little nosy through here. Let's forage. Okay. If you could hide Crumpets! Well, <laughs> this is like a picnic hamper. Gosh. This is extraordinary. We've got some cones. I mean, this is... Look, look. This is incredible. Is this a, a normal day's work for you? Oh, gosh. Well, different bins that are different with regard to... Can I give you those, Johnny? Thanks. Yeah. I, I've, I, I like cheese on toast. I like cheese on toast, and I've just seen some bread, and I've got some cheese in my hand. This is extraordinary. This is... Do you know, I thought we might just find the odd bit of stuff, but this is just... This is... Aladdin's cave. Wow. And this is... I mean, morally, don't you sometimes get offended when you see... Yeah. As much food as this just chucked yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, the first thought is sort of one of thanks often, wow, it's free food, but the second one is often one of anger. You multiply it out regionally, nationally, in, yeah. in, in some Europe, how much waste we are throwing away when there are people who are starving. It doesn't make sense. <sighs> so we've got some, look at that, grapes from Chile. Yeah. They've come halfway across the world. To be thrown out. To be thrown out, yeah. yes. Time to enjoy the fruit and veg of Alf's resourcefulness. So, to the home of celeb chef Anthony Worrell Thompson. This ham is, um, was quite interesting. I mean, it looks yeah. like a nice piece of meat, but it's how many past, how many days past it's used by days? I think that's three, was it three days? Is Fine. that a problem? No, because it's, it's got all the preservative nitrates and all that sort of stuff in there. Ham, I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's a perfectly good piece of meat. That's chocolate. chocolate. I mean, what is wrong with a bit of chocolate? I mean, please. I mean, it's just best before November 2008. So what? That was chucked away just because the packaging was a little bit damaged. Yeah. Which is kind of immoral. It isn't is it? totally immoral. What's your view, Anthony? You're on them. Um... Hey, what is that? A mystery oh, tin. A mystery tin. We love that. It's, it's a game show. It's waiting a game to show. <laughs> um, What's your view, Anthony, on out-of-date food? I mean, are you? Perfectly happy eating it? Ah, yeah, I'm always down the supermarkets on Monday morning seeing all the half price offers, you know, because, I mean, the only thing, I mean, you've got to be careful a little bit with poultry, say oysters, a bit of fish, you know, because they haven't got a long life. But beef and things like that, lamb, they'll be fine. I see no relevance in having shelf life on dried pasta, tins, or things like that. I've always said, why have you got shelf life on tins anyway? Because, I mean, They've got, you know, they've been to the Antarctic and found tins that are 50, 60 years old that are perfectly good inside. OK. You are the governor. I'm the well, governor. When it comes to cooking. Yeah. Can you make us something tasty out of this, the, the out-of-date banquet? Absolutely. I can see all sorts of lovelies going on here. Anthony, with Alf's help, prepares soup, followed by gammon with cheese and tomatoes, pasta with pilchards, sausage and mushroom bake, chickpea salad, and then pancakes with caramelised apples and, let joy be unconfined, trifles. In fact, they've made so much, I'm worried it'll go to waste. Can you believe, Anthony, can you get your head around the fact that all this stuff was destined for the landfill and yet you've made a complete banquet out of it. Yeah, well now Alf has shown me. I couldn't I wouldn't have believed it possible before because I would have thought they'd 
yeah, fine, it may not be saleable to the retail customers, but somewhere, someone has to be able to have a use for it. And that's the bit I can't get my head around. It's really nice. Really nice. <coughs> Tastes great. It's yeah. nice, isn't it? I mean, that's, that is a nutritious meal. Totally. Meanwhile, at my own out-of-date feast, it's moussaka, nine days past its use-by date. It tastes fine. Then a muffin, ten days past its best-before date. A bit dry, but if you were on a hike and this was all you had, you'd wolf it down. These runner beans are 11 days past their use-by date. They don't taste farm fresh, but they taste um, more than acceptable. And if I was eating them blindfold, I'd say, you know, they've been picked in the last week and um, they're, they're perfectly decent. Without wanting to be simplistic, it does seem wrong, really, to chuck away so much food, given that globally, 10 children die of malnutrition every minute. Wasting food also has environmental consequences. Most of it ends up in landfill and emits tonnes of methane gas, which hastens global warming. Every year, 20% uh, of all of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions is down to uh, food production. And we throw away a third of what we buy, uh, most of which we could have actually eaten. Now, that £10 billion worth of food that we could have eaten, if we ate all that food, then we would save sufficient CO2 to take one in every five cars off the road. Meet the Greens, who are anything but. Like the average British family, about a third of the food that they buy doesn't get eaten. In fact, Mum Karen bins up to £50 worth each week. So we've brought Women's Hello. Institute food champion Sorella Lavar to help Karen reduce her waste. Not by gambling on use-by dates like me, but by planning meals and using what she's already got in the kitchen. What sort of thing each week do you find yourself actually putting in the bin? Um, mainly it's the whole contents usually of the fruit bowl, what's left. I mean, things like so, bananas. Can we have a look, a look yeah, what you've got sure. in here? I notice you've got some... The bananas. Five yeah. bananas, and six I, bananas. Then. Six bananas, and I bought six bananas. Well, I, I admit that um, they may not look that, that attractive from the outside, but I think if, if that were peeled and sliced and put on a plate... Do you not think um, yeah. you know, anyone would eat it as a snack? Well, I mean, w we could... Well, yeah, you're actually quite right, yeah. There is nothing wrong with that <laughs> banana. <laughs> but... I love these. As well as showing Karen how to store leftover food correctly, Sorella shows her how to make a week's menu plan and write a shopping list. And the following week, Karen has cut her food bill by half. We've had a look at... Uh, at how much you've spent. And I think you were, before, spending about 120 to 150 pounds a week on your food shopping. Yeah. And now, you've halved that. You've spent, this current week, 60 pounds just on food, which is an amazing difference. Definitely. So if you're managing to spend uh, about 60 pounds a week on your food shopping bill, compared with what you were spending, over a year, you could actually save about £3,000. £3,000? Just on things that you were, were perhaps previously buying too much of, not actually getting round to using, putting in the bin. I'm now on the last lap and sampling 12-day-old hummus. Tangy, but in a good way. Penultimate day of experiment. It's bread. Uh, it was brown bread. <laughs> It's now green. That is mould. It's a bit like a Doctor Who special it's effect. Um, it's three and a half weeks old. And it smells a bit like cheese. Um, and I'm going to eat it. Toasted. Here it goes. Mm. Well, if I was blindfolded, I'd just say this is a normal piece of toast. I um, I can't taste the mould. I can just taste the, um, the butter and the marmalade. 
This is the last day of the experiment and it's all brand Sultana brand which is actually a candidate for the Antiques Roadshow, it's so old. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is top quality but it's more than satisfactory. So it's over and no ill effects at all. Not a scintilla of tummy trouble in the entire two weeks. I think the general public would probably be quite surprised that food out of date is not necessarily ready for the bin yet. There were several other products that Johnny ate, we tested several days past their use-by date and they were perfectly acceptable. Sure, some of the, the raw meats we tested had high counts of bacteria on them, but that would be expected. And once they were thoroughly cooked, these counts were eliminated because of the heating process. I think Johnny probably has a very strong constitution, so that's probably why he survived this experiment for two weeks. But there are groups of people whose uh, immunity may be less strong. So people who've just had an infection, for example, if you've had a summer cold, um, if you've had uh, food, other bouts of food poisoning, your immune system may not be so strong. Uh, babies, pregnant women, elderly people, these people are not as strong as Johnny and they have to be particularly careful not to go beyond the use by dates. So you've been warned. Don't try this at home unless you're fit and healthy and prepared for the consequences. Time to put my thoughts to the body representing supermarkets. Andrew, first of all, in my experiment, I ate food that was increasingly out of date every day for two weeks, and nothing happened to me. What does that tell us? I think it tells us you were lucky, um, and I certainly wouldn't recommend it to any of your other viewers to follow the same um, things that you did. Of course, cynics would say that it's very much in supermarkets' financial interests to have strict use-by dates because the stricter they are, the more we throw away, the more we throw away, the more we buy from you. No, I don't agree with that. Um, use-by dates are obviously a legal requirement for the uh, supermarkets to put on the packets and they're done for a serious reason, that's to stop people getting ill because there is a real risk that if you do eat products beyond their use-by date that things like listeria or salmonella could do you serious illness. We did a, a food raid, or uh, as my Freegan mate calls it, um, a, a food liberation exercise mm -hmm. uh, out the back of a couple of supermarkets. And um, there were bins stuffed with extraordinary amounts of food. I expected to find the odd loaf here and there. I mean, you could have fed the 5,000 with what we found. We are wasting a very, very small proportion of the food that's created in through the UK around the back of the store, basically. I think what you probably need to remember is how large your average supermarket is. It, it may appear a lot to you, but in terms but of the percentage of the overall food supply, it's minor, very <coughs> minor. I don't want to sound like Bob Geldof here. I'm not trying to save the world. But saving the odd sausage would seem to make sense. After all, the average household bins £420 worth of food each year. Food is, after all, an increasingly precious commodity, so shouldn't we value it more? For more information on the issues in tonight's programme, log on to our website at itv.com forward slash tonight.